Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. Uh, it's Sunday, June 28th, and uh, it's been a very busy June, uh, keeping up with everything. So our house just passed inspection on Friday morning, and uh, so we started moving in Friday, and uh, we actually got our bed over there and spent the night in the house uh, Friday, and we've been moving stuff ever since. So you see we've had some high winds and we've had some tree damage some trees fall down but they're dead trees but uh we got to get that cleaned up and we had a storm and man it rained like i've never seen it before we got three inches in probably under an hour my pond was dry and it filled the pond uh, completely up it almost ran over the spillway and uh i did some work on my drive and channeling water uh, so it wouldn't wash the ditch out into my driveway and uh, the drain pipe wasn't big enough it's only a four inch but uh, normally that I think that would have been okay so the pipe filled up and the rest of the water ran over my drive and washed it out so uh, this it's been crazy and busy so our gardens looking good uh, bees have come a long way and uh, I'll run by and show you the garden, the bees. Our six chicks are like full grown now, but they're still not laying. And we'll go by there real quick and uh, show you the melon patch. So uh, let's get over there and I'll try to make this video a little bit shorter and we'll end up at the house on the outside. I don't think I'm gonna show the inside anymore. Plus it's, it's just full of stuff now, uh, getting everything moved in there. So. Let's get over here to the garden and uh, we'll check that out. Okay, here's the melon patch and uh, asparagus is right here. We got a few little ones coming up. I think there's like nine of them in here. Uh, some of them I think died out, but they're only maybe four or five. Uh, that one's got covered up. Yeah, here's one right here that's brown. So that one didn't make it. Uh, man so that that heavy rain uh really soaked things good and this whole area uh was bare dirt and it had all that high nitrogen chicken manure in there and boy i tell you what the crabgrass got in here and just took it over it was just a mound of crabgrass you couldn't see anything so uh, my wife uh spent a week and I helped a little bit uh, so we wet it down and just pulling crabgrass and we put cardboard down and covered a lot of it up and uh, now there's an asparagus that's broke off oh well we put cardboard down and this straw on top of it to kind of suppress the weeds because man it got out of control so we got us some little melons going these are the sugar babies and then we got the i don't know what variety they are but they're like a, a black diamond but you can see uh, right there we got some nice ones coming in there's one there there's one this one here looks like it'll be a nice one taking a nice shape so so the big long melons are, are this row here and the shorter one the sugar babies are the back row and there's a few cantaloupe plants there's only four or five but uh they're right here and there and seem like there's one more over this way and there's a few uh volunteer tomatoes that came up in here out of the compost so this is the sugar baby row here's a tomato like a little tomato fell off of it <laughs> I don't know what variety these tomatoes will be but there's a uh, three or four of them in here and then we have a mystery vine that came up volunteer right here I'm not sure what this is if it's gonna be cucumbers no that's not a cucumber there see a little fuzzy thing that might be uh, cantaloupe I don't know it's the mystery plant okay let's get on up to the main garden so we had a, a round bale of straw and that's that's what's left of it 
Uh, we'd used about half of it before this year. Oh, so our nice composted uh, dirt that we bought, man, where it was hanging out a little on the edges from the tarp, man, this weeds just shot up. It seemed like overnight. So I'm gonna have to get some high powered equipment to get those giant things out of there. And uh, tarps. So I got a heavier duty tarp this time instead of the blue ones from Harbor Freight. This was the gray heavy duty. Put it on here in the spring. I think probably March is when we got this. And it's already dry rotted out from UV. So this is not a UV resistant tarp. I'm really disappointed in that. So buyer beware on tarps from Harbor Freight. Uh, I'm gonna get me some black plastic, clean this up and put black plastic over it that's uh, UV rated. Okay, the garden. So the cardinal vine is vining up good. It's uh, all up in the fencing. Zinnias are coming up strong. Alyssum, petunias. The alyssum's kind of taken over the petunias. And we have what I think is butterfly bush and the gulf flatuaries. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but uh, there's a caterpillar right there. So these are orange butterflies and they're about that long and about this wide. Very pretty. And they like these butterfly uh, plants. They'll eat all the leaves off and they'll lay their chrysalis. So we saw the butterfly flying around one of them already. And that's probably where that came from. So they'll have all this ate down to the nub here before long. And there's another one on this side. There's a little flower. It's not opened up yet. Uh, it might be passion flower. I don't, it's passion flower or butterfly bush. But uh, I'll find out from my wife and uh, I'll post it on here. Same thing on this side, alyssum and uh, petunias. Got some comfrey going here. And uh, let's get on inside. Oh, the sunflowers. So these are volunteer sunflowers and they're all blooming. Yeah, they're pretty. Bumblebees and honeybees really like those. And the weeds got away from us here. So over here, this is my onions. You can't even see them. The onions are done. They need harvested. So we need to get them out of here. I'll find one here. These giant, call these careless weeds because if you're careless, you don't stay ahead of them. So there's white onions. Man, look at that. That's a nice one. So yeah, look at the size of that. Not bad. So those are the whites and yellows are down here below. Golly, this is crazy. There's one. That one's kind of flat, but uh, these are from Dixondale Farms. And uh, there's some nice onions. Boy, I cannot believe how fast that has grown up. That looks like corn. <laughs> and garlic is in this tub. So we need to keep that thing watered. Looks like they're pretty dry. Let's get into the main garden. So the uh, celebrity tomatoes are doing really good. Got some nice big tomatoes going here. See the size of that. Look at that big cluster right there, boy. Bunch of them. And they're just loaded. So we're gonna get slammed with tomatoes all at the same time. And we got a couple off of here already. And uh, the pole beans, wow, man, they are kicking it in. So these are Blue Lake pole bean green beans. And uh, I put uh, 
strings up here up to this trellis and there some of them are already up to the top of that <laughs> and here's the other row of celebrities we've got 12 celebrity tomato the chives bloomed again and here's where most of that cardinal vine is coming from there's some on the other side but you can see how it vines so uh, later in the summer it'll have uh, long red flowers that uh, hummingbirds like okay the squash so we put our squash in this uh, insect barrier put this over it with the little hoops and the squash is doing awesome uh, you can see all the squash flowers in there and this is to keep the uh, vine borer beetles off but it's doing really well there's a squash right back here I have never had squash with leaves this big uh, most of the time by this time of year it's so ate up with squash bugs and last year the vine borers got in there and killed them all uh, we took down the celery and harvested some from that and got it uh, put away and we put some dill in here but i don't see any of it coming up so i think some came up initially but uh it got too dry for it at one time and we missed a watering or two and it it died out so we went ahead and bought some uh or i bought some allspice for canning for pickling for my pickles so we're going to make some cold pickles this year uh, the kind uh kind of mimics clausen here's uh green beans these are blue lake bush green beans these are the non-climbing style and a lot of blooms on there so we're going to have a lot of green beans this year and uh, we put those up and store them uh, we took down the hollyhocks that were here the blight just took them out this is uh, cucumbers so here's my uh, future cold pickle crop so we ordered the uh, cold pickle pickling mix and uh, we're going to do the kind where you don't uh, you don't can them in the canner and get the brine hot and seal them these will just go straight into the fridge and uh, i really like those so this whole garden is a a u-shape with the walkways through oh something we did since last time my granddaughter and wife worked all day one day well not all day but they worked hard at they put down the uh, landscape fabric and got the uh, mulch in here so this all got put down and the i think this is uh, cedar mulch or it might be cypress i don't know and they ran out of stuff and not enough to do right here but uh man it looks so much nicer really nice uh, spinach is here and this is uh cilantro for salsa and my one pepper plant is over here speaking of salsa oh it's actually got some little peppers on it some little jalapenos so it doesn't get a lot of sun here underneath these sunflowers we weren't anticipating these getting up that big but uh, we just let them go the carrots are down here and we've harvested a few carrots uh, they're not real big uh, some of them are pretty nice but uh, not real good sized carrots uh, carrots are one of the harder things to get nice big carrots you got to really work on your soil content and the uh, size or the how fluffy and how much you work your soil well these didn't get thinned right here that's what's wrong with them but you can see they're a little bitty so we'll just let them continue to grow but we did pull some nice ones out from right in here 
and we got the uh, caterpillars are coming in we caught a bunch on these uh, yeah there they are eating this up so we need to take care of those get some BT on here that's it for this garden it's doing well let's get over and check out the chickens real quick let's get them a big old chunk of comfrey Okay, they're waiting on us. Let's see, where's the little ones? So that one back there in the back, that light colored one, I think that's the one my wife calls Bertha. It's a buff Orpington and man, it's got the longest legs. And uh, there's a couple of the blue laced wine dots there, the darker. They still hang back, they're intimidated by the older chickens. So it's pretty hot today, they're, uh, they're hanging out in the shade. There's the young ones right there. What? Come out here. Show yourself. <laughs> and we've got a uh, buff Orpington that's broody. We need to get her over here into this introduction pen and lock her in there and uh, get her broke off her broodiness. There she is. So broody chickens, when you open the hatch or you try to get their eggs, they poof up. See how poofy she is? And she's pulled out feathers and made, made her nest with them. So and she's got one she's sitting on there. That's one I left from yesterday. And these are from this morning. All right. Quick update on the beehives. And we'll get up and walk around the house and we'll be done. So here's the pond. Our pond doesn't hold water worth a darn. It's got the sand rock bottom. So it filled up in just under an hour uh, up to the bottom of that cottonwood tree. The leaves, it was that high. And it was almost to the little spillway right there. But one thing I noticed, uh, water came down so fast it usually comes through this channel right here and I have this berm built up in here this is actually an old terrace that's left from when this was farmland and then the trees have grown up over it uh, but uh, this was washed out when we moved in here and I built it back up so the water would come down here to the pond but uh, I noticed water came over it it came down so fast water rushed over right there where I put that stick I marked it but uh, you could tell down in here where it, it just water just went over that way and uh, all up through here water was coming over uh, it came over a lot right here where this little brush pile is but you can see right there is where a bunch of water flowed down and right down there is if anyone's wondering on my wildlife shots on the log that's right here so there's the log across there there's a game camera right here looking that direction because uh, there's a little trail that the bobcat will take that way and uh, the foxes I think go that way too and then uh, the Browning high speed and high resolution trail cam is like right down there at the base of that log. 
pretty cool spot. Like everything that comes through here likes to hop on that log and walk down it. Pretty slick. Okay, beehives in house and we'll be done. It's a little maple tree. Keep the flag on it so I don't mow it accidentally. And along here we have Vitex. So there's a Vitex, there's another one over there. And there's a Vitex right here. They have these little purple flowers that flower in the hot summer months that the bees get nectar from. When there's nothing else making nectar, these Vitex will still be putting some out. Got these little pink flowers all over. Okay. This tree is an apricot tree that's never made fruit. We planted it from a little stick that came up volunteer at my father-in-law's place. So uh, yeah, check out these little flowers here. So it's uh, about midday and bees are all out pollinating and collecting pollen and nectar. So this hive right here is the whiskey barrel hive. Whiskey barrel hive is up here and this was a queenless hive here and I put them on top to give this a queen and I'm going to move this today over to hive number 13 and give hive 13 a queen because it's queenless and uh, that should take care of all of our queenless hives uh, I hope and uh, the other ones I took action on and hopefully that all worked out uh, this nuke here, double decker, is queenless, so I'm going to move this onto that one right there. So that's something else I've got to get done. Uh, bees are doing well. Honey crop is doing good. So anytime you see a hive that's more than uh, two boxes high, say so one, two, so that's got a a deep box above and a medium box above. So both of those are honey. That deep box, if it's full, will be uh, close to 70, 80 pounds of honey, and that medium will produce 40 pounds of honey if they're full. And I know that top one is full, that's why that one there is on it below. And I ran out of honey supers, these medium boxes, and I had to go to deeps. And I called Man Lake asking them, because uh, I ordered some, and uh, they said they're on back order and they don't know when they're going to get them to me. But it's too late now. Uh, so I put a deep on everywhere they needed more space for more honey. And uh, man, it's no fun uh, harvesting honey out of a 100 pound deep box, let me tell you. So uh, that hive right there that's gone, that uh, was a queenless hive that didn't get going. So I combined it right there onto, uh, that'd be hive number 21. And uh, so that took care of that one. So I'm down one hive right there. Get on over here to the main yard on the south. So they're all doing really good. Uh, so uh, hive 13 right here is the queenless one I was talking about. I'm gonna move that uh, whiskey barrel queen onto that one. So this is a new thing for me right here. This hive has three honey supers on it and the top two are completely full. I don't know how much they put in this bottom one here. So uh, all the honey down in these two boxes, the bees get to keep and that's what they, they live on over winter. But, uh, this was a really strong hive right here. Uh, this would be hive 15. So all these you see that have more than two boxes, that's where the honey's gonna come from. And we will collect it uh, mid-July, end of July, sometime in there. This hive right here, this is hive 16. It's a really strong hive. And it's the beard hive. Boy, they really beard up in the evening. Uh, they will have this whole front covered and this brick will be covered with bees. Uh, just so they can keep cool. Also, I have up here that little brown shim there. That's actually a screen. So they uh, have 
a totally open screen top so they can get uh, ventilation through there. Uh, I think that's a uh, solid bottom. Yeah, it doesn't have a screened bottom, so that so all the ventilation they get from below comes from their front entrance. So the ones that have a screened bottom uh, look like this one right here. So that's all screen open underneath there. And in the winter, I put an insert in there to close it off. So Hive 4 here has been queenless most of the early summer. And I put a queen in there uh, from a cutout I did in uh, Norman and put a queen in there from that. So we need to get in that hive right there today and check the status of the queen in there and make sure it's good. If not, we're gonna have to tear that hive down and move it onto other hives. Uh, otherwise, the wax moss will take that thing out. Uh, hive number two here is really doing good. It's a new, it's a new hive and uh, it needs another box on it. So uh, if one of these others has an issue, uh, that's a good candidate to put a, another box onto. And so that may be where I put the, uh, the double-decker nuke, get it right on there. That's another place I could put it. Okay, let's get up to the house and wrap this up. Okay, this tree here is a willow oak. And we got this from uh, Lake Eufaula State Park. It was coming up as a little sprout. And uh, we dug up four or five of them and planted them around here. So if you're looking for a good uh, drought tolerant uh, tree that will grow in crappy soil, that is a good tree for that, a willow oak. There's another one over there. And we had two up here, but they got taken out in the construction. Uh, the builder removed them with his bobcat, but uh, it, he must have popped the tap root because they didn't, they didn't live. So there it is. It's all done. Uh, the outside looks great. Inside's really nice. We like it. Uh, if you want to see the inside, go to my last uh, homestead update, uh, part two, and you can see the inside. So what's happened since then, we've got the uh, sprinkler system put in. So we got a row external and we got a row on the internal shooting out this way and the uh, flower beds have a drip line in them. So I don't know if I talked about it the last video, but uh, we dug all the dirt out of these by hand with a shovel. And uh, I hired a couple 16 year olds. They worked for two days. So I did uh, the half on this side of the house in the back and then they did all of this and what's behind me. And uh, boy, that was a job. So we got it all dug down about a shovel depth below the bottom of the sidewalk. Uh, then I put in this drain system with these basin drains underneath all the gutters. And these are all tied together. There's one over there. These two are tied together. And I ran the drain out this way. And the nice guys from the sprinkler system company ran right over them with the, uh, their trencher. And I had them plainly marked. They would made no attempt to uh, dig around it and find it. And they said, well, we'll tape them back up with irrigation tape and they'll be good. So. Uh, when I get time, I'm going to dig down there and find that and make sure they did that right. But man, that really ticked me off all that time I spent. So I've got a drain running out here and a drain running out from that corner. And so the backside grade is kind of all uphill. So I had to run the backside ones straight out that way by the drive. So this sidewalk is continuous all the way around the house. And we've got the drip line flower beds so she wants to make a rose garden here I believe I think last video the outdoor fireplace was not done so uh, there's four drains back here and they all tie together and run out that north end so we got some mattresses yesterday and uh, moved in furniture I'll show you a quick shot of the living room because you didn't get to see that. 
So this is the boxes from all the living room furniture. And uh, just going to show you the living room real quick and that's all we'll do. There's Maggie. So I got this section that we bought just for this area. It's the fireplace. And of course I got the TV moved in here, but uh, we're going to need a TV upgrade I think. That 55 inch just looks too small there. So uh, there's Carly and the wife. So they're all busy and I'm goofing off making a video and I'm sure they're going, get out of here. All right. So the fireplace is done, except it don't light. There's a part missing on the inside. It's gas, it's a fake one. Has a nice little uh, cedar post mantle up there. This is where you turn it on and off. And there's my gas port for my grill I'm gonna hook up. And uh, so when I cook, I can put my grill right here and not have to worry about propane. There's a view of the porch. We've got ceiling fans. So uh, everything we bring in gets the wipe down. So you see that brown water. So the furniture we had in the, the red barn over there that we've been storing for five years. So when that torrential rain hit, uh, so the first drains here, and this started filling up with water, right, from the, from the uh, gutters, and the water filled up before it got to the level of the basin here. So the pipe that runs from there underneath the sidewalk right here, right in there, it just floated up. So I dug it back out and got it reburied and added dirt here. So you can see now the dirt level here is up above this basin. And we're gonna get, uh, we got a bunch of leftover bricks. So we're gonna put brick down here and make a little spillway for that to get over. Uh, the reason it's not right under it is because there's foundation concrete right there and, that, and that's as close as I could get to it. So there's one in the front that's that far out too. So that's the, the uh, third drain in this network and then the fourth one is down here. Right here. And, uh, and that pipe runs off right there. Okay, so that's it for the house tour. Uh, I'm gonna shoot another video and shoot another intro for uh, this bunker, because people have been asking about the tornado shelter and wanna see it, so I'm gonna make a video on that. But I'm gonna end this one right here. Uh, so thanks for watching, and there may be a lapse in videos coming out because I gotta get this house thing done and try to keep up with the last things I gotta get done on the beehives before honey harvest and clean out the old apartment and get it ready to do the honey harvest over there. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.